Awesome. Doesn't she look beautiful? You can say the yes all the time. If you're in the house of God right now, why don't you turn to at least one person and compliment how good looking they are because they were made in the image of God. Say, you are so good looking. Come on. Come on. If I hope at least one person has told you that this morning. Awesome. Well, praise God. You know, I have a game that I'd like to play with you guys that I like to play with my kids. It's called I Spy. Anyone played that game? I Spy. I spy with my little eyes something, actually someone who just had a birthday. I know one, Shooter. Could you give it up for Shooter? Shooter just had a birthday. Any other birthdays or anniversaries in the house? Just to, I just want to celebrate you. No, I don't want to leave anybody out. Don't worry, I won't call you up to the stage. But we like, we like to celebrate each other because as you noticed, thanks Kelsey. Give it up for Kelsey, by the way. It's such a cute cup. Darcy, our drummer, gave me that cup. I didn't buy it for myself. You can see that. Anyway, so yeah, we like to celebrate here. We have a lot to be thankful for. We have a lot to celebrate, even in this season, which seems like a setback is really got set up. It's really got set up. And you know this, going back to the game I Spy, I like to play with my kids because it keeps them busy. And to be honest, I like to win. So I pick the smallest thing I can possibly see, and that keeps them busy usually from Cultus Lake to, to the church, right? But I'll pick the smallest thing because I like to win. And I don't know about you, if you like, do you, any winners in the house, do you like to win? Yeah, okay, good. Well, you're part of a winning team here at College Street. Um, but there's certain things I think sometimes that we are searching for or looking for Sometimes it can be the small and most insignificant thing that God wants to use because we know the little things are actually the big things. But then there are those little things that just bother us, like the unhealthy things that take too much of our focus and too much of our time, and then we miss the bigger picture. Can you relate to any of those things? Okay, well, I want to talk about today the small and what seems like insignificant thing that God wants to use as part of his purpose and part of his plan. You ready for it? Awesome. Well, we've been wrapping up this season, or this season, the series and season, Kingdomology, which is the study of God's kingdom. And I love that Pastor Steph leads us through the Lord's Prayer and our other pastors, my beautiful bride. And every time we come back to why are we doing this? What is this about? And those words, his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven are powerful words. Because we know in heaven there's no sickness, there's no disease, and we are made whole, right? And so what does that look like? What does kingdomology, the study of God's kingdom and of Christ's culture look like? Not just in the church, but in our home and in our community. So we've talked about kingdomology is about generosity. And so I said, what's worthy of your head, your heart, and your hands? Because God wants all of them. So what's worthy of you? You see, God wants to bless you, but not just bless you. Bless you, by the way. He wants to make you a blessing, right? He doesn't want to just bless you, but he wants to make you a blessing. And some of us, we might have, we've got the right. We might even have the might and the fight. But I'm going to ask you, do you have the sight? Do you have the sight to see what it is that God sees and what God wants to do? Let's look at the story of Joshua. It's called Joshua and the Battle of Jericho. Some of you may have heard it. Some of you are probably hearing it for the first time. But we're just going to go in Joshua 6, and let's see if we can see what God wanted his people to see, the Israelites. Okay, and let's see if we can find clarity in the midst of confrontation. Start with me, if you would, in Joshua 6, verse 1, if you got your Bibles. Oh, by the way, uh, my sister-in-law puts out my notes every week on the Bible app, which you can find, version on our website. 
where people matter, dot church, a little plug there. Uh, but you can use your phones or whatever app or, or your iPad like I have here today. So let's go into that together. If not, I think it'll be on the screen. Joshua 6, verse 1, and it says, Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went in, no one came out. No one went in, no one came out. Sounds kind of like us the last couple of weeks, eh? Some of us couldn't get in, some of us couldn't get out. Some of us couldn't get back into our homes. Some of us couldn't get out of our homes, right? But with all the flooding and that's been going on that has kept some of us in, it has also given us the opportunity to look in. When we feel that we are locked in, I believe God wants us to look in before we start looking out. You hear what I'm saying? Many of us at uh, times take life and our freedom for granted. And I believe that God wants to give us more insight today before he gives us foresight. In the second verse, it says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I am deliver I have, sorry, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. That's a powerful verse. Because this hasn't happened yet. See, I have delivered what has God already spoken over you, over your family, over this church, and over this community that he needs you to see first in your heart. See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. My first point is that vision is seeing outcome that is greater than the obstacle. You see, because all they saw was a fortified city and fortified walls. But God saw something else. He saw the outcome. He didn't say that the obstacle wasn't there. But the vision has to be greater. Greater. The, the, the object of what you're seeking has to be greater than what's obstructing your vision. What does God want you to see today beyond your walls of unbelief? We all have them. So what does God want you to see beyond? Say beyond. Beyond my belief. What's standing in the way of what God is ready to do today? And he's just waiting on you to change your focus. See, the Lord was telling Joshua to see, not with his physical eyes, but to see with his heart. He wanted him to see internally what he was about to do externally. Before he could do the thing on the outside, he had to deal with what was on the inside. Jericho's mighty walls, again, its men had never been breached. And you have to understand the generation, Moses' generation, before Joshua's generation, they also saw the same walls. They also saw giants in the land. And what they saw with their eyes kept them from their calling. Why? Because they listened to the crowd. They listened to the crowd instead of hearing their calling. I'll show something really cool. If, if you were to look into Numbers 13, if you could follow with me, Numbers 13, you can open your Bibles, Numbers 13, your apps, this is, you're with me? Okay. Numbers 13, I want you to see something here uh, in verse 27. Numbers 13. You see, this is a report that they came back with after they had come out of slavery after God had done miracles, led them by a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night, after all the evidence, and God is calling them into a promised land. So Moses sends out spies, and what did they spy with their little eye? Well, verse 27, they gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. See, this was part of the promise. It would be a land full of milk and honey. And here is its fruit. Verse 28, but the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We saw the descendants of Anak there. 
It's true that what was out there and what they saw, but again, what you focus on is what you give power to. Ooh, that's good. Someone should write that down. If you haven't written that down or memorized that last week or the week before, I'll say it again. What you focus on is what you give power to. The majority of the spies focused on the size of their problem instead of the size of their God. We do it. They should have been like Caleb. You see, out of the 12 spies in there was Caleb and Joshua. And Caleb even spoke up. And, you know, by the way, Caleb was from the worship tribe. He was the worship leader of the tribe of Judah. Okay? So we should learn from the text here that worship is our weapon. Why do you think Caleb saw things differently than the majority of the crowd? Because his focus and attention was always on praising God, not his problems. Success leaves clues. So Caleb speaks up and he silenced the crowd. He says, we should go take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. Well, unfortunately, they spread amongst the Israelites, the rest of the spies that had gone out, a bad report about the land they had explored. Here's something that stood out to me. I have read this lots before. But be careful who you're getting your information from. Be careful not to listen to the report from those that rebel. Right? Don't try to reason with a rebel, otherwise you'll be ruined. And what do I say by that? I'm not talking about a righteous rebellion. I'm talking about those you know a tree by its fruit. Right? Actions do speak louder than words. And we do need to be careful who we listen to, what we listen to, and what we follow. Would you agree? All right, still with me. They said the land that we explore devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We know that's not true. If that was true, who, how would they miss these little people running around the place? You know? If everybody, isn't that true? All the time we're like, it's, it's everywhere. The, if, what, what you look for is what you find. You make it a big deal, it becomes a big deal. And what you see is what you get. I'd say what you even perceive is what you receive, but what you ingest is what you also project. Ooh, that's good. I just came up with that, honey. So, so what are you taking in? If you believe, you know, like you believe in your heart of hearts that it, all you see is problems, then all you'll see is problems. But if you believe that God is for you, not against you, that you are the head and not the tail, you're going to act and talk and move a little differently than everyone else. It says, we saw the Nephilim there, and we seemed like, note it says seemed, we seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. We seemed like, therefore we looked like. What we see with our eyes can become a battle against what God wants us to see in our hearts. The little things that we're overlooking that God sees that we don't see. So this is what happened to the generation before, and now God's speaking to the next generation. He's speaking to Joshua, their leader, to see if he will see differently in his own heart and if the people We'll see the same. So my question for myself is the same question I have for you. In this season, am I seeming or am I seeing? Am I seeming or am I seeing? Seeming is giving an impression. Seeing is an action. Look it up. Seeming is just giving an impression. The other is actually an action. One just wants to impress. The other wants to take action. Which one are you? Welcome to the kingdom. Because kingdom vision is one that takes action instead of sitting around on its assets. 
instead of just giving an impression. Because we were created to be creative. We were created to serve God and to serve others. That's why something inside of us can't just sit by while other people are hurting and other people are in need. Because that kingdom seed is inside of you and inside of me. We will not stand by and do nothing. We will take action. Why? Because we see the kingdom vision. When the spies were, the first spies sent out, there's actually another group of spies, but the first spies sent out by Moses that played that game, I Spy, they had the land right there before them. The promise that God wanted them to see in their hearts, but all they saw were large walls and large men. In their hearts, the problem was bigger than God's promise. Now God wants Joshua and the, and the next generation to see the outcome, not just the obstacle. I've shared this with our leadership before. The best definition I've ever heard is vision is a mental picture of what could be fueled by a passion that it, say, must be, must be, must be. It's not just that, it's not, you can, you, sure, you could picture in your head a better lifestyle, a better life for your family in this community and, and people uh, getting help that are in need that are being flooded in homes that have been lost, but that should needs to turn into a must. It's got to be fueled by passion. That's the difference between a vision and a fantasy. It's fueled by a passion that it must be. And in Proverbs 29, 18, it says, without vision, we are unrestrained or we perish. So back to Joshua 6, 2. Back to the other group. See, I have delivered into your hands. How can God already be speaking at the same time into the future and past tense? He was speaking into existence what hadn't happened yet. The Lord was casting vision, foresight through insight. Because before you can have it in your hand, you must own it in your heart. My second point is, vision is where action is greater than assumption. You like that? Vision is where action is greater than just assuming. I'm telling you, their parents did a lot of assuming. The parents before Joshua did a lot of murmuring instead of moving. They murmured about so many things. They murmured the moment they came up to the Red Sea, and as the Egyptians were chasing them, they murmured. They murmured in the wilderness when they were hungry, and so God sent food. He sent manna from heaven. This is like cake from heaven. Can you imagine waking up every day and having cake from heaven? and fat-free cake. I don't know, I can't say. But I'll tell you this. God sent them quail. That he, sent them, he sent them food. He took care of them. You know, they murmured to Moses when, when, when he went up to receive the Ten Commandments from the Lord. They murmured. And they murmured in the wilderness when even when they were thirsty and even when, even though, look it up, it says for 40 years they didn't wear out their clothes. That God allowed them to re remain having their... My clothes don't last more than two days. These are my holy jeans, by the way. Don't judge me. And I think how many of us are murmuring when God is saying, get moving? Right? So they murmured when they were thirsty. And don't we do that? What are you thirsting for? And how are you approaching God? But they murmured to the point where Moses got so frustrated that he struck a rock when he was supposed to speak to it. He struck it when he was supposed to speak to it. 
And because of that, that whole generation struck out. There's more to the story. God was calling something out of Moses that he thought was so small and insignificant. The ability, he said, I can't speak. You can't or you won't. Don't, who told you you can't speak? If God says speak, then speak. If God says stand, then stand. If God says move, then move, not by your strength, but by his spirit, says the Lord. See, the whole point and why they ended up because they didn't take the promise, because they wouldn't fight for it, they wouldn't believe for it, they wouldn't, you see, they were still slaves in their hearts. So God had to remove the murmuring in their hearts. It took 40 years of moving in the wilderness so that the next generation could get a fresh start. You know, then God asked Joshua and the Israelites to do something different to bring down these walls. And how many of you know, if you want to experience different, if you want to become different, you must do different. And so he gets them to march around the city walls. And on the seventh day, seven times, he gets, you can imagine what that, what are these guys doing? Are we having a parade or are we having a battle? But God wanted to do something in their hearts and with their unbelief. It says in verse 16 of Joshua 6, the seventh time around, when the priests sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, Shout! For the Lord has given you the city! College Street, come on. Shout! For the Lord God has given you the city. You see, vision allows praise to be greater than our problems. It gives you something worth shouting for. No matter how big the walls may seem that you're walking around, God sees beyond your unbelief. You see, devotion will keep you from being Deterred. And in this season, I don't want you to be discouraged because a lot of us have taken detours because we had to. But don't get discouraged because of the detour because there's a bigger picture. The generation before for 40 years could have been discouraged the whole time, but there was a bigger picture. God wanted to do something in them so their kids could go further, so their kids could do more than they would ever hope, imagine, or dream of. And there's something about the detour. I'm sure many of you took detours just to come to church today because you had to. But you know what the detour does? It allows you to go to places you've never gone before and see things that you've never seen before. So God can do what he's never done before through you. It's all about perspective. Forty years. And all this so that his kingdom could be, could be done and his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. His kingdom come. Verse 17, the city and all, all that is in it are to be devoted to who? The Lord. It says, only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall be spared because she hid the spies. See, there were other spies that were sent out this time that got inside those walls. And a prostitute named Rahab hid them and then released them so they could go back with a report. God used a prostitute who lived in the very walls that were standing in their way from God's promises. Something that was so small and most people would have seen as insignificant played a major role in our story today. You see, Jesus, the way, would come from heaven to earth. He would come and be born in a manger. We're going to learn more about that. He would come into a mess with a message. God is in the business of turning messes into messages. And I want to show you something real cool. If, If you look in Matthew 1... Matthew 1, you're going to find 
um, the genealogy of Jesus, 14 generations from Abraham to Jesus. And in Matthew 1, I believe it's verse 5, right there, Solomon. Solomon, the, the, the father of Boaz, whose mother was who? Rahab. Rahab, the prostitute. In the genealogy of Jesus. And then if you go ahead to verse 16, it says, Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Out of the lineage of Jesus, you find Rahab, a prostitute, someone, something that someone overlooked that seemed so small, seemed so insignificant, but God saw her. God saw her. God sees you. People that we walk past every day, God sees them. And he loves them. And he will use them. Why Rahab? Because he can. Because he will. Because she was made in the very image of God, just like everyone in this room. And it was because she feared God that she took in these men. She had a reverent fear. She knew there was a God out there. You know inside your heart of hearts there is a God. And that he loves you. You know there's something more to life than just this. That you were made for more than just this. And that key to the kingdom is Jesus. And because of her act of faithfulness, not just her, but her whole family was spared and set apart to bring in the key, being Jesus, from heaven to earth. And if you have the vision to see what God sees in others and in this city, and in this city, you too can be part of victory. And you no longer have to fight for victory, but you can fight from victory. The verse I want you to think about, and I hope you go deeper this week. I hope you get in a connect group. It's verse 16 that says, the seventh time around, some of you are like, I've been here before. This isn't my first flood. This isn't my first uh, uh, time with lack. This isn't my first time fighting. This isn't my yes, God's not done yet. Don't give up. Don't bail out before your breakthrough. The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded, it wasn't a suggestion for them to praise, and it still isn't today a suggestion. It's a command that we shout, for the Lord God has given you, ladies and gentlemen, the city, so that you can serve the city, so you can love the city, so that you can be light in the city. The takeaway today is that a vision of victory is seeing Jesus in the city. Seeing Jesus in the city. Could you stand to your feet? Would you stand to your feet with me right now? I think there's people in this house that have had a glimpse of foresight. And then I think there's many of us where it's not clear. And before we can see out there and see with these eyes, we need to see with this heart. And if you're here today and you're having a hard time seeing, the way you're going to get clarity is only one way, and that is Christ. He came to start a relationship with you. He came and took every messed up thing you'd ever do or have done that sin that separates you from the heavenly father. And he took it to the cross. He said, it is finished. And three days later, he rose from the grave. 
That same message has been carried out for generation to generation. It's called the gospel. It's called the good news. And Paul said in Romans 10, verse 9, if we believe it in our heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, believing that God the Father raised his son from the grave, we will be saved. It is a gift of grace that is given that none can earn, so none can boast. All we can do is boast in our belief in Jesus. So if you want to see out here, start by seeing in here. Let's invite Jesus in right here, right now. I'm going to lead you through a prayer. And I'm just going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Help me to see with my heart. Lord, I believe that you came and died for me. And for my sins, would you please forgive me? I believe that you rose from the grave. Help me to see. Would you come into my heart and be Lord over my life? I'm ready to see. Thank you that my past is past. And today... I'll see in Jesus' name. Let's stay in this moment right now. I don't know if this whole I spy game and message hit you, but it hit me, even if I'm just preaching to me today. But God's word, it says, reveals the things that are in our heart. And if the message spoke to you while well, all eyes are bowed and are, are closed and heads are bowed, if his word spoke to you today, would you just give me a thumbs up in the room? Thank you, thank you. Awesome. Thumbs up all around the room. Again, I do that because God wants to reveal evidence to you that signs and wonders will follow those that believe. There's more for you. There's more coming. But it starts in here in your heart. And the next question I have for you is if you prayed that prayer for the first time, which we just prayed together as a group, or if you're coming back to him, you did your thing, but you know it's time that you need Jesus, his insight and his foresight, relationship with him. Would you just give me a thumbs up in the room so I know it's you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, praise God. Can we, can we give God some praise in the house? Come on, put your hands together. Sit down for a little bit. You're, you're going to probably have a hard time sitting for this one, but we'll try. This is Vision Sunday. And if you just showed up, well, I'm telling you, it's not by coincidence that you're here today. Because God has given us both insight and foresight as a church. And we literally see the evidence of that as we look around the room with people that have a desire and a heart to do more for the kingdom of God that have a desire and a heart for hurting people, that have a desire and a heart not just to give a hand out, but to give a hand up. So thank you for being a part of this family, even if you just joined us today. Now, Pastor Rudy is going to join me today, and uh, we're going to hit three categories. Hold on tight. You might want to take notes. These will be coming up again, but you're going to see why you're sitting here today. Our vision for, well, not our vision, God's vision for 2022, if it ain't God, it ain't going to work, is three parts. The first part I want to talk about is our community, College Street community. Talk about an opportunity to be part of flood relief. How many people with boats in the house? Just, just give me a wave. You got a boat in the house? Yeah? Uh-huh. Jesus is going to use that boat. <laughs> you might have other boats you didn't even know you got that Jesus is going to use. But one of the first things that we're going to continue to do is we're going to partner with the Chilliwack Community Cover. Did you know that they are a part of this family and a part of this house and they are right here in this building? Let's give it up for Chilliwack Community Cover. So I talked to, as soon as this happened, I talked to Doreen. I said, Doreen, I got texts, I've got emails, I've got phone calls flooding in with people that want to serve and want to help. And, she, and I said, Doreen, what do you need? She gave me a list right off the bat, and the first thing she said is, Pastor, we need food. Well, I said, I'll tell you what, Doreen, 
We prayed about it, we got back, and we decided a thousand pounds of food. Is that good enough this year? Could we aim to deliver a thousand pounds of food to our community cupboard? Is that a God-sized vision? We can easily do that. Easily. She was in tears. I did the math. It's like 19 point something pounds of food uh, a week. Like coming in. That's like 20 people bringing a pound of food. You, you know, the moment I told her that, now tell me this isn't a God thing. We have our bins. They're on the side. The, the side you'll see it when you come in. Um, I go back to check the bins. They're completely full of food. We need to step out in obedience and watch God's blessing. And we are called to be the hands and feet. So we're going to do that. Um, what else are we going to do, Pastor Rudy, in our partnership? All right. So as we know, we live in a community that has a lot of amazing people, but some of them are homeless and don't yeah. have winter jackets. So the, the goal for this year is to distribute, collect and distribute 300 jackets and, and clothe the homeless. And so. And why 300 jackets? So we have some amazing people in the house. Uh, Celeste, one of them, as well as Emily, that actually know most of the, if not all of them, by name. And they said, hey, there's about 450 homeless people, and at least 300 of them right now <clears throat> don't have winter jackets. And so that's where that number came from. And so... So we did the math. That's like th you bring in three jackets. Again, they could be used jackets, obviously quality jackets. You know, I have, I like jackets, by the way. So I started, I got four jackets hanging up there. And you know what God also put on my heart? Tell me this doesn't speak to you. He wants our best. He doesn't want our scraps. And I started going through, well, I don't really wear that one. And I don't like that one as much. But then the Lord put on my heart. But I ask of your best. So I started to pick it out. I'm like, man, this is going to bless somebody out there. Keep them warm and look good at the same time. <laughs> Praise God. So but we're going to do that. You want to be a part of that? Awesome. Keep bringing in those jackets. Thank you. Uh, the other one that we've got Christmas coming up, and we always do something big for Christmas and on Christmas Eve. And uh, last year, we took care of, I think it was a dozen families. So we contacted the community cupboard, and we contacted the school across the street. And we said, hey, give us the families that need it the most. And what we did is we contacted the parents of the children, and we specifically, and we'll do the same thing this year, ask the parents, what do your kids want for Christmas? We're not giving out random gifts for such and such an age. We go out, Santa and the little elves go out, they shop, they buy those gifts, and they deliver those gifts on Christmas Eve. We invite them to come here for a big party, and those that can't make it, we personally deliver all those gifts and, and food hampers to all the families in our community. So we're going to... Come on, we can do at least 25 families this year. Let's do 25 families together this year for our community. And speaking of which, before we move on to the next one, on flood relief, I'm going to tell you, this is, you guys must be doing something right because we can't give all the details right now. Um, but there are other businesses that are seeking out this church and this building and this location to do fundraisers for flood relief. And there's a big one coming up. Keep it in your prayers uh, because we'll know by the end of today. They said, we want your venue. We want to come down there. We want to partner with you. And we want to help people in Fraser Valley uh, that are being flooded and in, in, in need to this season. This is our house. And our house was meant to be open for our community. So there will be more about that. But I'm telling you, as soon as you open up those vessels, God pours in. You open up those jars, God pours in. So keep that in your prayers. But that, you'll be hearing more. Okay, what's the next one? Okay, so the next one we want to talk about is studios as part of our vision. Now, as you know, we had the community cupboard right beneath us here for a long, long time. We actually moved them over to the other side of the building, and now we have all of our space down here ready to start building our studios. So the first one that I want to talk about is our live stream studio. Right now, the online is being streamed up in that booth over there. Now, as you can imagine, that can be a little bit distracting, mixing an online audience or an online sound in a live room. So the goal is to actually build a studio that's soundproof right below here where we can feed our stream into, and then we can have a team of people mixing and sending out and connecting with our online audience because our online audience is growing. I mean, we reach a lot of people every week. How many? Over 16,000 people 
through our, our online ads and advertisements a week with a message. So uh, if we can improve that, we want to improve that. So that's our goal for the first quarter is to have a live stream studio ready to go so that our team can be well prepared to get the message out there. The next one that I want to talk about is a podcast studio. And so for those of you that don't know, even right now, all of these messages are on Spotify. They're on Google Podcasts, as well as Apple uh, and iTunes. So what we want to do, though, is beyond that, Pastor Matt and the team, there, there's a lot of great teachings even throughout the week that you guys don't get to hear, leadership teachings. Who was here at Rise Night? What? Like, who enjoyed that leadership teaching? For real. Like, imagine if you could listen to that. Now, it's not always feasible to record live, so that's why we want to build a, an actual podcast studio where we can go in at any time, do interviews, or just do leadership pod, podcasts. But So it's ready to go. We can go in and record podcasts and get them out to the world. And just so you know, the calling of this is a training center. You don't want to just hear my voice. I want to hear your voice. God has given you a testimony. God has given you a word. And there are teachers, there are preachers, there are people that need to have a voice that we need to get behind. Okay? So that is our job, to release people with the voice that God has given them and give them a voice and a platform that reaches thousands of people every week for the kingdom and glory of God. And we've even talked about doing a kids podcast and bringing in a kids team and having a kids podcast. How cool would that be to tune in and hear your kids doing a leadership podcast for yeah, kids? come on. Right? <laughs> um, so the next one kind of ties into that. It's a radio. So last year, we had the vision to, to launch a radio station, and we did. We successfully yeah. launched College Street Radio. Go to collegestreetradio.com, actually, if you haven't yet, and check it out. It's a 24-7 live streaming online radio. The paperwork has been submitted to the CRTC, but it is a process, as you know. And so our goal for this year is to keep our online, obviously, but we are going to transition to an FM station locally yes. to reach the Fraser Valley with our own FM logo We've all, station. just another update, we've already done the frequency test. It costs a lot of money, takes a lot of time, and yes, we will be the first Christian radio station in the Fraser Valley because... We love 106, but we need one right here in the valley, right? Yes, so something a little bit more up to date as well. Yeah. <laughs> and they're not actually Canadian. Yeah, come on. They're great. They're awesome. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about is recording. So a writing and recording studio right below us here. We have lots of space, lots of room. Um, if you guys didn't know, uh, our team traveled down to Nashville about two months ago and we did a whole EP which is going to be coming out at the beginning of the year. Don't have a release date yet, but that was awesome. However, we, at this stage anyway, we can't travel to Nashville every time we write a new song. So how cool would it be to be able to, to have our own space where we can go in and record or even just, you know, a writing room where we can write, get creative and then another space where we can record and get the songs out there. Now we have a producer in Nashville that we're working with and what he does is he'll actually come to your venue if you're set up for it he'll come to you and record in-house he'll do a live album recording right in this room with you guys in the room and then if we have the studio ready to go he'll mix it right here like he'll work with us in our own space so that's just one huge opportunity for us to be able to get these studios ready to go so we can start releasing music more frequently and uh, in-house and if you're curious, uh, if you were here last year, we talked about studio space. We had built studios on that end where the yes. kids' wing is, and our team did record the yes. audio and... Speak Revival. Who, who's heard Speak Revival? That yes, that song was recorded in that studio space that yeah. is now being transformed into a kid's space because we did a little switcheroo there. It's an upgrade. We just realized that being in a kid's space, it's kind of like working at home, right, with all your kids? <laughs> when the kids are running over top of you all the time, it's really hard to control the noise. So we'll make all of this here in the worship auditorium, yeah. the space for them, including downstairs. Studios are already there, they just need to be built. Any carpenters in the house? Any electricians in the house? Anyone with vision or hands in the house? Yes, AJ, I see you there. Derek, you guys are hooked. Speaking of which, by the way, uh, I wanna give it up for them and uh, Paul, I don't know Paul if you're here today too, 
But um, something that you'll want to see that's already being transformed in our house and in this home is we've been building a little city for the kids. There is shops on that end downstairs. It's in construction zone, but just like Five Corners, we've got all these little shops that are being built. It looks like a city. Kids City is coming to College Street, and we'll be ready by Christmas Eve. So, yeah. We love our kids, and we're going to invest in them. So, sorry. Yeah, that, that wraps up the uh, studio. So we should go to I. So we got CSI. CSI. Community, Community studios, studios and internship. Sure. So we launched the internship last year because we are called to be a training center, right? And we gave our best to our best. We know there's even more best out there that we'd like to see come in and uh, take some of the classes. But our pastors and leaders have it took the time throughout the week. And how many interns in the house? Just so I know. Yes, we had 11 interns. Give it up for our interns. 11 interns. Uh, that took uh, leadership, right? They took apologetics, and they took a worship class. And I'm telling you, we watched every one of these uh, men and women just rise up in their confidence and rise up in the workplace, hey, Shooter, and are rising up. So we listen to what they need next. And so here are the three things that we're going to do next. First off, in the next semester, end of January, we are launching an entrepreneurship class, a kingdom builders class. We have amazing men and women of God that have started businesses, that are thriving in business, that are gonna come and speak to these men and women of God so they can step into that next season and launch their own businesses. You like that, Krista? Yeah, you do. <laughs> awesome, what else we got? So good. So yeah, last semester we did a worship one, and so this semester we wanted to you know, up it a little bit and do a production one that includes more than just worship. It'll still have worship elements, but it will include camera and media. So everything that you would see, stage crew, like all the elements that it would take to do a full production. So if you're interested in any of those things, you could already sign up. Just let me know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be more inclusive just so that it's not just... Uh, we did a theology of worship one last semester and it was good. It laid some mm -hmm. of the foundations and, and kind of helped us get started. And now we want to go a little bit broader so that we can include more people. And then we see a real need. Tell me if you don't see a need for this, especially in starting businesses in this community and in this season, is we're going to do a networking class. We're going to take some of our best networkers and have them share and teach with you, how do I network? How do I grow a team? How do I lead a team and a healthy team? Right? So we're going to, we're going to draw from them as well. So those are the three classes we'll be doing the next semester. You'll hear about the other classes. But where do we go from here? Well, Faith Without Works is dead. So um, we do this really cool thing um, where I have those pledge cards that Pastor Steph uh, mentioned to you. They're, they should be in front of you. If you don't have one, there's actually two. One you take home to remind you of the vision. The other one is this white, it's got white boxes. They look the same, they're not the same. Say they're not the same. They're not the same, okay? If you don't have one of these and you'd like to pledge today, just put your hand up and our host team will come to you. Um, what's cool about this is even if you don't have money to give, this is between you and God. So just so you know, we're not gonna hound you, we're not gonna go after you, and God is after your heart, he's not after your wallet. But he wants to bless you. So if you wanna be a part of sowing in to this vision for 2022, my wife and I did this last year, it's really cool. We actually set up a monthly giving, and we call it our above and beyond. This is beyond your, your tithe, right? This is above and beyond into the vision for the year. Thank you. So many of you gave to the above and beyond. We don't believe vision is a one-time, let's have an event, rah, rah, and forget about all those people that are in need. This is going to be an opportunity for people affected by the flood and in our community for the next years to come. We're not going to forget about them. We're going to sow into them and sow into this community and give where it needs to be given. Okay, so that you can fill out one of those boxes and... and uh, you know, if God puts a number on your heart, put it down. And we're going to do even our offering a little different. We're going to tie it into our offering. We're going to have the baskets up front here. And if God gives you a number, something that you're believing that you want to give and you want to commit between, between you and God, just come forward, drop it in the basket. And uh, we're going to make it as part of our act of worship today. Again, we are blessed to be a blessing. And before we can receive a harvest, we have to sow a seed. And so I'm just going to pray for that right now. 
I'm going to pray for that right now. Father God, I thank you for the vision that you have given this community and this church. I thank you, Father God, even the thing that seems so small that you will take and multiply and use for your glory and for your kingdom. We thank you, Father God, that your word says that you will bless the cheerful giver. Lord, we ask now that every move, every action, every vision and every dream that you have placed on the hearts of those in the house today would reap that which they sow a hundredfold. In Jesus' name. Lord, this is yours. And all we have to give today is yours. And we give it in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's worship together. Feel free to 